The Center for Audit Quality presents Profession in Focus. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Profession in Focus. I'm very pleased to have as our guest today, Larry Clinton, who is the President and CEO of the Internet Security Alliance, or ISA. And um, as your title and uh, your organization uh, might indicate, we're going to talk about cybersecurity today. Terrific. A very important issue and topic, so we're very pleased to have you with us. Pleasure to be here. So, the ISA is really a thought leadership, a thought leader on cybersecurity. And I know you've talked to numerous people throughout the supply chain and have really provided very valuable insights into uh, companies and, uh, frankly, our government on cybersecurity issues. And one of the things that I know you've said in the past, which I found fascinating, is, and I'm going to read because I want to quote you accurately, is we need to integrate the economics of cybersecurity better into our policies. Mm -hmm. and I found that very intriguing. So tell me what you mean by the economics of cybersecurity. Well, uh, first of all, thank you, Cindy. Um, most people think of cybersecurity kind of as an IT problem, and it's not. It's got an IT component to it, but it's an enterprise-wide risk management issue. And if we just focus on the information technology, we're really only talking about how these attacks occur. And in order to solve the problem, we have to figure out why the attacks occur. And the reason that the attacks occur is largely economic. Uh, the, the, the criminals are, and, and nation states are trying to get into uh, our systems to steal our intellectual property, our personal data, our national secrets, uh, all for largely economic reasons of their own, sometimes related to military. Um, and the, the reason that the economics are so important is because in the cybersecurity world, all the economics favor the attackers. Cyber attacks are cheap. They're easy to access, uh, they're incredibly profitable, the business model is, is terrific, whereas on the other hand, cybersecurity is almost inherently a generation behind the attacker. Uh, it's hard to show return on investment to things that you've prevented, and there's virtually no law enforcement. We only prosecute one or two percent of the cyber criminals. So what we really need to do is to rebalance the economic incentives so that we have more incentives to stop these cyber attacks and attack it really at the core. And unfortunately, most uh, federal policy, uh, up until fairly recently, focused only on the how and not the why. And so we've had an awful lot of uh, requirements placed on industry that were counterproductive, uh, so that um, they were being forced to comply with multiple redundant uh, systems of, of regulations uh, and the security personnel, we don't have enough security personnel, were all f doing compliance, which meant the regulations, while well intended, actually were anti-security. So we need to be rethinking this whole process so that we understand the cybersecurity problem in a more holistic fashion, which includes the technology, the economics, and government policy. We need to integrate these all together. Well, I know the ISA and you personally have spent a lot of time talking to boards of directors because they're going to be an integral part of this too from a company's perspective. And I'm going to quote you again because you've said that board engagement on cybersecurity is a really positive story in a place where we get so little good news. Yes, so tell me, why is this glimmer of hope, this glimmer of positivity? Well, um, up until comparatively recently, the boards, as I was just describing, were thinking of cybersecurity as the IT problem. Some would say, we got the cybersecurity problem, and say, well, we got a bunch of guys at the end of the hall. They handle that kind of stuff. That's really not us. Uh, but over the last couple of years, they have uh, you know, realized, as I said, that this is a problem that affects them. Uh, and so we've been working with the National Association of Corporate Directors. And people have talked about trying to get the boards involved in cybersecurity for a long time. But working with NACD, we focused this problem differently. So what people were talking about when they were talking about getting with corporate boards was we need to teach them more IT. And the boards really don't want to learn all about IT. They want to talk about NIST frameworks and ISO standards. They want to talk about what boards talk about, which is innovation and price to earnings ratio and mergers and acquisitions and new product launches. So what we did was we took cybersecurity and we put it in that context. One of the cybersecurity issues the board needs to understand when they're doing a merger, when they're launching a new product, developing a new partnership. And when we were able to do that, we were able to develop a set of uh, principles 
that NACD then put out uh, as a handbook and have a training program. And the good news about it is that came out in 2014. In 2015, Price Waterhouse, one of your uh, uh, companies, uh, did a review in their annual global information security survey and they found that uh, this process by name uh, had resulted in a 24% increase in cybersecurity spending, uh, a, a better alignment of business goals uh, with uh, cybersecurity, uh, the creation of a culture of security within the organization, better communication throughout the organization, not just in IT, about cybersecurity. So this is one of the areas where we have rethought how we were going to approach cybersecurity implemented it by collaborating with uh, or other organizations and we are seeing tangible results. We can actually make a lot of progress uh, against this problem. It's going to be hard, but we can do it. We know how to do a lot of things and I think this is one example. Well, and it's been, I think, a shining example and so that's why we're so pleased at the CAQ Absolutely. to be working with you and ISA. And one of the things that we've been talking about together is what is the role of the CPA or the auditor with respect to cybersecurity? So I wanted to get from your vantage point, what value do you see CPAs bringing into this process? Much as you tackled it uh, with the NACD on boards, how can we work together to help CPAs have a seat at the table? We are so happy to be having the opportunity to work uh, with the Center for Audit Quality. Um, with all due respect, uh, most companies, they're more afraid of the auditor than they are of the attacker. Um, so you guys have this unique uh, avenue to reach people. People listen to you and uh, the, uh, the really visionary approach that you have taken to trying to develop uh, a, uh, a constructed forward-looking model of cybersecurity and adapting it to uh, traditional auditing practices is so promising because if we can work with the auditing community and get on the same page with, with uh, your clients uh, in terms of this. While we're working with the corporate boards, we can evolve a much more productive, dynamic model which, uh, of, of continually improving uh, our cybersecurity, which we need to do because the attackers continue to improve. And this is a model that we think is sustainable and transferable on a worldwide basis. And of course, we're in a worldwide uh, economy now. And it, this is the model that can work. The historic model, which is government regulation mandates, can't keep up with the, the, the current cyber threat. That's a, that's a model that was developed in the 18th and 19th century, and it's not going to deal with the 21st century problem. But if we can get the auditors involved, as, as you are doing, um, we really can uh, reach a tipping point, we think, uh, where we can put cybersecurity on a, uh, on a going forward basis where we will be able to deal with the attack community in a much more effective fashion. So this is very exciting. Well, I think it's going to take all of us, all of us in the supply chain, mm -hmm. uh, to really uh, try to tackle this Absolutely, problem. Yeah. And it is such a big problem. Um, I don't know how you sleep at night, Larry, because this is your, your, you think about this day to day. Uh, and uh, I know sometimes when I am talking cyber, uh, I find myself uh, staying up at night worrying. So. Um, Tell us, what is the one thing that keeps you up at night? If you had to pick just one, which I know is almost impossible. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, Cindy, uh, most of the publicity is about you know, breaches of personal data and stuff like that. I don't even think about that stuff. Um, there are really, as horrible as that is, and I've had my identity stolen, um, what the one thing, if I had to pick one thing, is it is possible now for uh, a nation state to do a cyber attack on a weapons system. And if you do a cyber attack on a weapons system and you successfully uh, embed a logic bomb or something into uh, a weapons system, a missile, let's say, if it's in the hardware, you can look all day, you're never going to find it. It's not like software where you can do a scan and it'll come up. Mm -hmm. So if they were successful in doing that, you wouldn't know that it had happened until you pushed the button and the missile went off and it came back and hit you in the face. That's pretty That's scary. And not only that, but now these attacks, by the way, are hard to do and expensive. So, uh, but on the other hand, we're dealing with nation states. So these are entities that spend hundreds of billions of dollars to build weapons they never intend to use. 
So all the economics that would stop a criminal from doing this, that doesn't apply to a North Korea or heaven forbid an ISIS. The ISIS is not up to this yet. They're not sophisticated enough. North Korea probably isn't either. But they could be and they could get there. So that is really, really worrisome. And to make it even worse, since we couldn't find it if they did it, they could simply tell us they did it and they haven't done it. And now we don't have any security, uh, you know, about our own weapons systems. I mean, it just it cascades into, you know, much, much, uh, it gets into a very scary world. The so ultimate lethal game of blank. That's the, that's no. the, yeah, that's the, yeah, if you want one thing that's, no. how's that? Is that scary enough? That does. So oh. on that happy note, um, <laughs> uh, well, I do. But we're working with the Center for Inequality <laughs> to solve <laughs> and, this well, problem. Well, <laughs> and you are working with the intelligence community, which is so important. Yeah, so yeah. I do feel better and safer knowing that. So, Larry, I want to thank you not only for your time today uh, to talk about uh, these issues with us for our profession and focus, but also for all the work that you're doing around this really just vitally important issue. So. Well, thank you, Cindy. And I'm not kidding. It's, it's a real honor and a pleasure to be able to work with you. Uh, what you guys are doing, your contribution here is so important. Uh, cool. It's as important as anything we've ever done. So well, I feel you. likewise. So thank so you. Right. And with that, I want to thank all of you for joining us for this issue of Profession and Focus. Mm -hmm.